So that brings us to the formula writing um, part of the test. And the formula writing is pretty recent stuff. So here we go. Copper 2 sulfide. So you know that copper is Cu. You're going to need a periodic table for this. And copper is plus 2. And sulfur is, has got six valence electrons, so it's going to have a negative 2 charge. So a plus 2, minus 2, they're already equal and opposite, so you don't need to do anything else. You notice that the IDE ending always means the, fr the um, plane element, that's always a big word, usually means the plane element. Hydroxide is an exception, you have to use a list for that, so we'll get there in a minute. All right, potassium phosphide, you'd have K, you'd have P. P's got five valence electrons, minus three charge, going to gain three. Potassium has one valence electron, it's going to lose one. So they're opposite, but not equal. So I need to multiply the one by three. Chromium two phosphide. So you got chromium, that's plus two. If you look on your periodic table, you'll see in the chromium box, which is number 24, it'll have a little plus two and a plus three. So you want to use the one I tell you to use, minus 2. Phosphide is P, that's minus 3, we just talked about. So now you need a, a number that 2 and 3 would both multiply into, which would be 6. is the least one they both multiply uh, into, or, to, or the smallest number that's divisible by both 2 and 3. We call that the least common multiple. So we have to have 3 times 2 to make 6, and 2 times 3 to make 6. So it's Cr3P2. Barium oxide, you got barium is plus two, you got oxygen with six valence electrons from minus two, equal and opposite already, you're done. Nickel three iodide, nickel, nickel. The three means plus three. If you look at the periodic table, again it'll have nickel and it'll say plus two, plus three. I think that's twenty-eight. Yeah. All right, and uh, if that's minus one, uh, on your periodic table it's gonna say I minus one, then five and seven. But since iodine is more electronegative than nickel, it has to take electrons, and if it takes, the only possibility is this minus one charge. So you have to have how many minus ones to match that, so this times three would give us the po opposite of uh, positive three. Okay, this is maybe the more confusing one, the most confusing so far. 10 is plus four, it says. If you look at 10 on your periodic table, it'll say two and four. It's telling us here to use the plus four. Nitride is in. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so it's going to gain three. Tens plus four, nitrogen is minus three. You've got to find a common multiple. The lowest number divisible by both four and three is 12. So I need to multiply four by something to get 12. I need to multiply three by something to get 12. So it's SN3, S4. Iron 2 hydroxide, you have an Fe, you have an OH. Now, see the list at the bottom of the table? Hydroxide is one of the polyatomic ions that ends in IDE. Mostly they end in ATE or ITE, but hydroxide is an IDE. Okay, the iron, if you look on a periodic table, will say plus 2 or plus 3. But this is telling us to use plus 2. So plus 2, hydroxide is minus 1. So you have to multiply that by one by two to get it to equal that. So you put a two here, but the two needs to apply to the whole polyatomic ion. So you must use parentheses on these. Remember we said in class that if this number gets multiplied, you have to use parentheses. Okay, lithium sulfide, that'd be Li. IDE ending again just means plain sulfur, except for hydroxide, cyanide, and peroxide. IDE means plain sulfur. Lithium plus one, sulfur minus two, so I'm going to have to put a two down here. And potassium phosphate is K and then PO4. Now, you have to watch on your periodic table, there's a hydrogen phosphate, whoops, HPO4, there's an H2PO4 dihydrogen phosphate, and there's just a plain old phosphate. All right, we want the plain old phosphate, which is minus three. K is plus one. So I need how many ones to match this three? I've got to multiply this number by three. And I don't have to do anything with the phosphate because it's negative three. So I do not need parentheses because I did not need to multiply this by anything. 
Then copper 2 acetate, you got copper there. Acetate, there are a couple of acetates on your table. Use the top one more, it's more commonly used by inorganic chemists. That's minus 1. Copper could either be 1 or 2. This is telling us to use 2. So I need to multiply this by something to get it to equal that. So I'm going to have to multiply it by 2. So anytime you multiply that, you're going to have to use parentheses, remember? Oops. All right, so I'm going to have to put a parentheses and then put a 2 down here to show that I multiply that 1 by 2. All right, down here, this is a balancing equation section. We didn't quite get there this year, but we do know how to write the formula. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we'd have zinc plus aluminum chloride, so you'd have Al and Cl, that's plus 3, that's minus 1, so it'll be AlCl3. Yield is an arrow. Zn and Cl, that's plus 2, that's minus 1, so you're going to put a 2 down here. And aluminum is just Al. Aluminum nitrate, you have Al, notice that A-T-E ending, so that's on your bottom of the periodic table list of polyatomic ions. That's minus 1. That's positive 3. You've got to multiply that by 3. So you put a parentheses and a 3 outside. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH. That's plus 1. That's minus 1. So you're good. And it makes sodium nitrate. Sodium is plus 1. Nitrate's minus 1. You found, once again, nitrate on the bottom of the table. And aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum is plus 3, hydroxide is minus 1, so that doesn't work out very well, so you have to multiply this by 3. So you need, if you're going to multiply a polyatomic ion by something, put it into parentheses. Now for those of you who are watching what's going on, you're noticing that there's three hydroxides here and there's only one over here. We'll deal with that when we get back in January. Okay, aluminum plus iodine yields aluminum iodide. Okay, so iodine, aluminum plus iodine yields aluminum iodide. That's an arrow. All right, now, there's something that I've mentioned to you before a couple times, but not, I haven't emphasized it a lot, but there are some elements that occur in pairs when they're by themselves. They are bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So anytime you see one of these elements by itself, it has a two after it. So down here, uh, the iodine will have a two. All right, then we write the formula. That's plus 3. That's minus 1. So how many of these do I need to match that? I have to multiply 1 by whoops, 3. All right, and once again, you see there are two I's here and there's three over here. We'll deal with, we'll address that in January. Right now, we're just writing the formulas. All right, calcium nitrate. That's Ca. Nitrate's NO3. I know this, I put a parenthesis here because I knew I was going to have to multiply it. That's plus 2, that's minus 1, so I'm going to have to have a 2 out here. And if I need to multiply this by something, I use parentheses. Sodium phosphate, Na, phosphate's on the bottom of your periodic table. Notice it's not hydrogen phosphate, it's not dihydrogen phosphate, it's just plain phosphate. So sodium, plus 1, phosphate, minus 3. What goes here? Okay. And that gives us sodium nitrate and calcium phosphate. Okay, sodium, that's plus 1, that's minus 1, so we're good on that one. Calcium phosphate is plus 2, that's minus 3. We're not so good there. So I'm going to have to find a common multiple. So what's it going to be? 6. So what do I need to multiply 2 by to get 6? So I'm going to multiply it by 3. And then, I didn't write that very well, that's going to have to have parentheses because I'm going to multiply this by 2 to get it to equal 6. That's the end. Alright, so hopefully this helps you make your cheat sheet.